Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ram. That was ASAP Batter Night on Piano. And happy Monday, everyone. It is Monday, and of course, um, I'm happy. Uh, my, oh, um, good. My sister is uh, pregnant again, so yeah. I'm going to be an uncle again. It, so I'm really excited about That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you um, know when she's due? No. Nine months from now? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> but when babies come. They're there forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess it's usually after the first ultrasound, they're able to determine when they're when the kid is I think so. You know, being yeah. able to be born, I guess. Something like that. Or something like the range. Yeah, that's really awesome. Congratulations, yeah, Scott. Modern science uh, can pinpoint that cool. pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> but only if they can pinpoint a little bit more about the weather. So let's talk a little bit about weather. It is overcast today, if you haven't already noticed. Um, it is currently 42 degrees outside. Your high is going to be in the 60s. It's going to be partly sunny, mostly cloudy tonight with a low of 43 degrees. And then, of course, by Tuesday um, through your Thursday, there's rain likely to happen throughout this week so um, if you guys are planning on doing anything out and about um, be aware that um, it's gonna be raining and such. Yeah. maybe today is the first is the only day you should do things outside because yes. falls upon us now so yeah. I did a shoot over the weekend uh, uh, Headwaters Dance did their bus tours and nice. every year uh, they add a bus that's what they said. <laughs> okay. Like the first year is like a single bus with a <laughs> filled to the brim with people. Second year was two two buses. This oh, year wow. now they have three buses, so they oh, had wow. to do two buses at once, and then they had a third um, tour which only had one bus. So I guess it, it's 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 definitely growing, and um, cool. it was pretty good. You know, they went around town. They did it. They did it at the uh, Madison Footbridge. And so this was Bear Bait Dance Company. No, Bear Bait was on Friday night. Okay, Bear Bait was Friday. Yeah, they did Humanist. Yes. Not to be confused with Humanist, <laughs> which is IST rather than EST. So then this was Headwaters Dance Company. Yes, Headwaters Dance Company does awesome. uh, has been doing bus tours. This is their third year they did it. And yeah, it was cool. uh, pretty interesting. They did it um, at the... Uh, uh, Greeno Park Pavilion. Ah, yeah. ah, yes. Yeah, Scott sent me a text and was like, I'm at a pavilion today. The gods have shown down yeah. on me. <laughs> pavilion is my trigger word. It is. It's his favorite. It's favorite. <laughs> we laugh about it. It's really random. Yeah, it's just super random. But it, it's, a, it's a context that you can pretty much use for any other part of the day. It's like, oh, just me by the pavilion. Everybody mm -hmm. already automatically knows what you're talking about. <laughs> even, even if they don't know what you're talking about, they just like, oh, okay. Okay, I'll and see you there. It's usually, even if it's just an awning. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's the pavilion. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I lunch at a pavilion today. <laughs> nice. Of all the times during our morning show, we talk about pavilion. We can, call, we can probably fill about five shows. I would with think just so. Pavilion. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, so if you guys want more information, you can go to the National Weather Service <laughs> gov mm -hmm. to find out more information about your weather. You can also find out more information about Wake Up Missoula by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wake up Missoula. It's a nice way to write out twice. Um, you can like us on Facebook. You could follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook, and to find out more information about us, just check out MCAT.org. And of course, I do want to show um, uh, Twitter once more for oh, our yeah. Wake Up Missoula okay. page. And this picture right here, as you can see on our very uh, cover, is from last year's Homecoming Parade. It is. And um, we haven't really updated it since then. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited. Um, it looks good. We look great on there. Um, Homecoming is coming up on October 1st, and we're going to be doing um, it live on Let's MCAT, along with uh, we have volleyball live tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Um, on MCAT, which is going to be on Channel 189. But, of course, if you want to find out where you can find that, you can go to, to our website, MCAT.org. You can basically click on High School Sports. It's the nice little tab that's up here that says High School Sports. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's wonderful. It's just a great way to um, cheer on your local sports team. Um, specifically Sentinel High School. Yes, yeah, mostly we <laughs> mostly work with Sentinel, Sentinel High yeah. School, and then you know we film the other schools because they just happen to be there. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the guests. Yeah, they're the guests. They yeah. never ask us. But we have uh, <laughs> uh, some folks on here. We're we gonna, do. Today is the day where we're yeah. uh, going to be starting a new sports segment. Um, mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Since um, Scott and I are not very sports. Interested or like I mean, <laughs> we just like don't care, which is okay. It's it's totally fine. So we've got some couple guys on here that you guys heard from a couple weeks ago or a yep. week or so ago. So they're going to be starting Monday sports casting. Yep. So that's great with us. I mean, yeah, we need it. So that'll usually be every Monday towards the end of the show. Yep. So it's uh so we'll have Kempson Cross and Cole Johnson on here yeah. uh, around uh eight later, twenty later. five eight twenty or something like that. 
845. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah. but you'll see them. <laughs> well, we do have some new programs on tonight, but before I get into new programs, I do want to talk about the Rose Report. So if oh, you yeah. guys are out and about, um, Orange Street is closed. Um, not necessarily closed, but you can expect some delays happening on, because they're going to be building a roundabout in the passageway that gets off of Interstate 90. It looks um, like they, I live on the north side and I always drive by there, so it looks like they're working on the ramp the interstate, the I-90 ramp coming off. So I think coming off of the highway onto Orange Street is gonna be a little jumbled. Ooh. But other than that, I haven't seen too many other things going yeah, on. Cause the yeah, because the other roundabout that's close to the highway is the one off of Ail Airport Boulevard, which oh, yeah. is not even that close to the highway. It's maybe like a, a whole section away. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really affect the highway traffic. It's so, true. But um, what I've always seen in other um, cities like Seattle is like that a lot of their highways kind of bleed in with their city. Yeah. But the nice thing I like about Missoula is like when you when you, you go through a passageway mm -hmm. to get to Missoula in it's a way. True. But anyways, uh, that's what's happening. Orange Street um, at I-90. Uh, Brook Street, uh, they're having an intersection of Old Highway 93 to Pizza Hut. <laughs> the I know, landmark I, I, Pizza uh, Hut. The landmark <laughs> is Pizza Hut. It's ridiculous. Uh, but uh, they're doing all that construction on the Old Highway 93. They're going to be extending the... Um, the Tiger Grant Trail that's uh, basically from Hamilton all the way to Missoula, uh, basically a 20 year project um, uh, uh, culminating in Missoula and of course many other communities around are also um, jumping on board with this because it's basically going to go to reserve and they're going to have an overpass going over reserve, it's going to go back to the train tracks and it's going to fall along the train tracks all the way to Silver Park, California Street Bridge, you know that general area and then I guess they're continuing that with the Kim Williams Trail all the way to East Missoula so it's basically nice. going to be one big connectivity thing cool. and uh, I guess like one of the big things is like a smart idea to do would be like an Ironman running competition That'd be really like cool. 20 30 mile just like run or maybe like a triathlon mm -hmm. just maybe know. they will in the coming years as soon as that stuff is developed and people are used to it it's the Western Montana triathlon Woo! Wow, uh, you got that. Yeah, there, there's nice. the title. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds I good. give that to you for free. Yeah, but somebody pay us. more willing than me. To yeah, do that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not really event organizers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it takes a lot of phone calls. I guess. I think so. Phone yeah. calls and just like um, re begging press for release, donations. press releases, press releases. Yeah, I don't really. I don't know. know. We, you know, if one person tries to do it by themselves, it never works out. That's why you always have to get a team of people to do certain things for you. Yep. Uh, and you have to pay them because if you don't pay them, then they won't really do it. It's that true. Well. Anyways, they need incentive. <laughs> it's a, it's a crazy getting, world we live in. Yeah, we're getting off topic. Um, let's show some events and when we uh, let's talk about some new programming. Um, uh, Ron shot um, Front Street, which is a an original play that was done here in Missoula, cool. and it's about uh, prostitution and the red light district in Missoula. Um, so the play's called Front Street, and we have a little. Uh, a, tease for that tonight on MCAT along with uh, the continuation of the Celtic Fest and when we come back we'll have Noelle with <laughs> events. <laughs> community events for you so I've got some events um, as well as some we never do we never really do news so I've got some events as well as some newsworthy things that kind of stuck out to me from over the weekend just a couple things um, after my events so up first we've got things happening today um, uh, starting at 8 30 a.m. over at Bitterroot Flower Shop this week is walk and roll so this is uh, Missoula's 25th anniversary of bike walk bus week but they rebranded it to walk and roll so if you stop by Bitterroot Flower Shop on a bike or walking or you went there from a bus you'll be eligible to win a $65 bouquet so you can just sign up for the raffle for that 
Uh, at the University of Montana at 9, they have a commuter experience. You can buy, stop by their tables in the UC for activity for sharing your commute experience. Uh, they have prizes throughout the week. Miss Mo Gymnastics is hosting their family fun time at 9.30. This is an um, open gym for ages walking to 12 years. And then at the public library, they've got their book sale that starts at 10. Uh, you can go in there and buy all these books. Awesome. Yeah. Book sale, you know, it's kind of pretty, you know what it is. <laughs> um, over there at Jeanette Rankin Peace Center, they've got a gift shop. Uh, you can create your own t-shirt, if you your own peace t-shirt, as long as you walk there, bike there, or took a bus there. So that starts at 10. We have our preschool play group over at Roots Acro Sports Center uh, starting at 11. It's for ages walking to five years. Uh, they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and the parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. Then at 11, over to Carousel for Missoula, they, you can get a one free carousel ride as long as you have biked there, walked there, or took a bus there. And at the Learning Center at Red Willow, they've got Yoga for Wellness. It starts at noon. This is uh, four weeks. It's $40 ongoing class, or it's $12 to drop in. Um, yeah, $40 for four weeks or $12 to drop in. It's an ongoing class, so you can really come in anytime you want to. And so it's just a well-rounded mix of standing and floor yoga poses with energizing breathing exercises. We have our bridge group at the Missoula Senior Center at 1 o'clock. This is the beginner's brush-up group. And then over at uh, Glacier HR Services, Inc., which is going to be at the Hilton Garden Inn on Reserve Street, they have a free seminar. It's called Conflict and Team Building. It starts at 2.30, and so it's basically just what it says. You're going to learn how to uh, manage conflict and be a better team builder or be a better uh, team person, you know, better in a team. Uh, there's a computer electronics in their makerspace at 3 o'clock. This is at uh, the Missoula Public Library. So you can, from 3 to 6, you can work on a project of your choice or just go in there and learn how to use their equipment. And then we have word play at the base of the warehouse mall at 4 o'clock. This is word games, poetic exploration, and expansion wrought through sharing. At McCormick Park, we've got a bike skills course. It starts at 4 o'clock. So you can test your bike skills on ramps and seesaws at McCormick Park. Uh, bike cleaning and tune-ups are available and the ambassador the bicycle ambassadors will be around to answer your questions about bike safety and routes around town it'll be from four to six yeah and then we have our boys rock camp that's gonna be at the Zootown Arts Community Center starting at four o'clock so it's $235 um, if you're not a member or $225 for members it'll be Wednesday, Mondays and Wednesdays September 19th through the 28th from 4 to 6 and so it's for ages 8 to 16 and so what it is is that you don't have to have any music experience but boys will go in there and they'll uh, compose their own songs they'll form a band they'll learn how to use their instruments and they'll play at the family friendly Friday uh, at the top at lounge as well as they'll hear from a lot of different other bands that have guys in it and they'll be able to perform and they'll just be able to like build self-esteem and confidence and leadership as well as learning cool instruments and be a part of a band which that sounds really fun like I want to do that <laughs> at the Missoula Fencing Association there's a beginning fencing class that starts at five o'clock it's for six weeks it's for ages nine to eighteen um, and so you'll learn the basics of fencing with two weapon styles EP and foil um, so it meets, meets from five to six cost of the program is a hundred dollars but equipment is included so if you want to register you can go to their website missoulafencing.net or just call 406 251-4623 to sign up. At Imagination Brewing Company, they have an eco-friendly eco DIY workshop that starts at six. It's a hands-on step-by-step series that teaches you how to prepare your own environmentally friendly body and household products. Downtown Dance Collective has got an East Coast Swing dance class starting at six o'clock today. Uh, it's a six-week session. You'll learn the basics of swing. Um, and then you'll be able to connect with a variety of partners and how to perform the moves and turns that make this dance so fun. So I don't think that you have to have a partner to go, you can just show up. <clears throat> the Learning Center at Red Willow has a breath mindfulness movement class. It starts at 6 o'clock. It's $40. It's one evening workshop. It's from 6 to 7.30. So it's a design for learning resilience for body, mind, and spirit. And they utilize ancient and current methods of breath work, mindfulness, and movement and discuss the benefit of these methods. Missoula Public Library has got an intro to email that starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, registration is required. You can call 721-2665 if you would like to sign up. 
Um, and so at 6 o'clock at the Missoula Public Library, they've got a keynote speaker. It's called Introducing Native American Literature. It starts at 6. And so um, Mo Humanities Montana speaker Dorothy Suzag will discuss Lewis Edwright's Love Medicine in an interactive presentation at the University of Montana's UC Theater. It's cool, from 6 to 7. So I guess it's put on by the public library, but it's going to be at the UC. Zootown Arts Community Center has an intro to mosaics class at 6 o'clock. It's from 6 to 8. It's $120 for non-members. Um, and it's a five-week class that's geared towards beginners who want to learn about basic techniques um, and tools and materials that are involved in creating mosaic art. So if you do want to sign up for that, just go to zootownarts.org mosaic class. And then at the Downtown Dance Collective, we have Capoeira that starts at 6.30. It's a dynamic form of martial arts practice first developed by African slaves in 16th century Brazil. Mm. Yeah. And then we have got my last class for Monday that's going on is a beginning salsa dance. This is at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center at 6.45. It's going to be from um, September 19th to October 10th. It'll be 6.45 to 7.45 and only $17. So if you guys want to sign up for that, you can go call 549-8765 and register for that one. But that's all I've got going on for you guys for Monday. Uh, we're switching gears now. We're going to Musical Notes with ASAP Adonai. Well, first of all, I want to announce a sad story. We lost Charmaine Carr, the actress on Sound of Music. Who played Liesl, right? Yeah, she mm -hmm. sang the song I Am 16 Going On 17. Second, today is also Pirate Day. Arr, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that. Anyway, what's a pirate's favorite letter? You would think it's the letter R, so what's a pirate's favorite letter? What? C, <laughs> for the high Cs. Oh, <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to not quit my day job. <laughs> I was going to say R. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's not R, but anyway. I just want to throw that so. trivia out for your little trivia bus on Pirate Day. I like that. Anyway, about a year ago, I did a story on Ultraman from Nebula M78 Beyond the 40th Galaxy. So in this edition of Musical Notes, we'll probably be different. Scott suggested I do a story from someone overseas, so this is just for Scott, this story here. Anyway, our guest is a legend and iconic in her country, Japan. And we're talking about Japanese actress Hiroko Sakurai, known to the world as Akiko Fuji, and there she is. And what's interesting about this actress here, first of all, she was born in 1946, she is now 70. She is an actress, an author, and a producer of Subaneo Productions in Japan. But she's best known for playing Fuji. And um, some of your science fiction audience buff members may recognize her. Another thing that's interesting about this actress here, she has done 10 television series, all related to Ultraman, from 1966 to 2005. In addition to that, she has done eight films related to Ultraman from 1967 to 2008, and she has written three books in addition to that, A Chronicle of Ultraman's Youth, The Genesis of Ultraman, and her television name, Akiko Fuji Story, The Secrets Behind the Filming of Ultraman. So there's not much to say as far as awards and stuff because they do things different in Japan than we do here in the United States, obviously. And so I just thought it would be interesting to share this brief story about this actress who has done everything related to Ultraman, all the movies, the television shows, all related to Ultraman. And there she is as an older woman, and she does what you call um, conferences and tours these days related to Ultraman with her cast members that are still surviving. Nice. Now on that note, I will quit. Thank you very much. That was Asaf Adonai with Musical Notes. And now up, first, up next, we've got some events going on on Tuesday. Um, and so starting at 8.30 a.m. over the Women's Club, if you bike there, walk there, or took a bus, you'll get a free guest pass. Um, so it's three free visits. Um, and you also can enter to enter in a raffle to win a free royal pedicure. Oh my god, yeah! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, interesting. Thank you, Scott.
Okay, so over the Children's Museum of Missoula, also if you bike there, walk there, or took a bus there, you'll get buy one, get one admission. So you have to pay for one admission, but you get the other one free. And they are going to be doing, um, I don't know what they're going to be doing today. I bet I have it later on in my events. So that'll be tomorrow. Um, and then over at the Missoula Art Museum, they have got contemporary Native American art from 1977 all the way to 2015. So included in this exhibit are works by over 17 established and emerging Northwest indigenous artists who track the evolution of contemporary Native American arts movement. Yeah, and so that'll be on display at the Missoula Art Museum starting September 20th through October 4th. At the Public Library, they've got a big read themed Tiny Tales. It starts at 10.30, so Tiny Tales has got a different um, approach on it for tomorrow. So it'll be the theme of the big read with rhymes, songs, and stories on the themes of families and animals of the West. It starts at 10.30. And then there's a walk and roll themed story for ages uh, 0 to 3. It starts at 10.30 as well. So attendees who bike, walk, or bus will receive reflective bags filled with bike safety info and a reflective snap bracelet. Cool. Uh, and then also the carousel for Missoula. If you bike there, walk there, or bus there, you'll get a free ride. Starts at 11. And then at the Children's Museum, I knew that I had something for them. Uh, they're going to be discovering why the sky is blue. That starts at 11 o'clock. And so they're going to be doing a science experiment involving water, soap, and a flashlight. Sounds intriguing. <laughs> at the Missoula Public Library, the Missoula League of Women Voters, I have a little presentation. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, it's a panel discussion on CI-116, which is a proposed amendment to the Montana Constitution that would expand the rights of victims of crime. So, if you don't know anything about that, it starts at noon tomorrow. In the makerspace, there's a guitar club. It starts at 12. Um, so, it'll be, if you are interested in participating, of course, you bring your guitar. It's suitable for beginning players who would like to learn more techniques. Space is limited to six participants, and online re registration is required. So just go to tinyurl.com. So it's this one right here. Yeah, MLP Guitar Club, September 2016. Or just type, type in Guitar Club in Google online, and I'm sure you'll be able to find it. At Zutan Arts Community Center, they've got a Potter's Paradise starting at 315. It goes from September 6th through October 11th, so it's already going on. Um, and so if you want to find out if that's still happening, you can give them a call. At the Missoula Art Museum, they've got an after-school adventure that starts at 345 um, tomorrow. And so it's from September 13th through October 18th, so it's already in the ongoing. Um, and so young artists will work with Bev on a variety of 2D and 3D uh, projects. Yeah. You guys can give them a call if you want to know if, it's, if you can still get your child in there. I don't have the number. You can look it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center at Red Willow. It starts at 4 o'clock. This is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers to have with PTSD, anxiety, and sleeping problems. We've got Falf in the Parks. They're going to be falfing at Benny Hughes Park. This starts at 5 o'clock. And then we have a family hike at Marshall Mountain. This is put on by CFSN, which they don't have there. So it's Child and Family Service Network. Cool. So they've got a family hike at Marshall Mountain tomorrow at 5. We have Missoula Farmer's Market at 5.30. And then we have Yoga in the Parks at 6 o'clock. That's going to be at Kiwanis Park. Picking Circles at the Top Hat Lounge at 6. This is for bluegrass-oriented musicians to go there and jam out. And then at the University of Montana in the UC Theater tomorrow at 6 o'clock, which I guess I'm going to be filming this, this is called Soft Landing Missoula Presents. This is a lecture series. And so as Missoula welcomes refugee families from the Congo, they are going to explore the history, culture, and experiences of that region at the UC Theater tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And so if you guys can't get there, I'll film it, and then it'll be on our channel in like a month and a half. At the Music Recital Hall, there's a Missoula Symphony Orchestra audition. So it starts at 6.30. So if you'd like to be a part of the Missoula Symphony Orchestra audition start, um, so you ha will be contacted. Oh, okay, so you will already have to be contacted, I guess, and you'll already have to be in the thing. But, you know, maybe you could just, like, give them a call and find out what the specifics are on that. Yeah, but they ask that you arrive 15 minutes early to check in. It starts at 6.30. And then my last event for Tuesday is Tell Us Something, Fork in the Road. That's going to be at the Wilma Theater at 7. And it's 10 bucks. 
And now I've got another little segment. So I've got, I had some uh, new, I guess not really like crazy newsworthy things, but things that I thought were fairly interesting. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking so, to me about this. So. Yeah. And so what I'm going to talk about first is this new astrological sign that everyone is freaking out about. Yeah. So NASA has just, they put out an article um, earlier this year talking about how they had just found out, well, they knew already, but they just newly discovered a 13th constellation called Aficus. Aficus? Aficus. I looked it up so many times how to pronounce it before I show, and I still forget. Yeah, so they're saying that there's this new astrological sign. And so if you are born under this, your new astrological sign would be... So this now Swiss shifts everything. everything. Yeah, but um, but NASA is talking about saying that astrology is, is not science. So it doesn't really matter. So like only if you really, really follow your horoscopes yeah. then maybe that you can have a total freak out about this. But as far as everyone else goes, it doesn't really matter. Now people can um, reprint um, the horoscope in the newspaper. I we'll have to so. do that at an extra time. Yeah. Um, you'll have to be like, oh, so what's your sign? And like, and then you, then you almost 100% respond like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's like usually the response <laughs> after everyone says, oh, what's your sign? It's like, oh, I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, that makes sense. It's like, <laughs> how, what? Okay. I'm sure each of these astrological signs makes sense for anybody exactly. if you need to lie about your date. And so when the Babylonians first invented the 12 signs of Zodiac, they decided to leave out the 13th one because they wanted to have everything fit right. in the calendar year. Or like, yeah, so they chose the 12 and they excluded the 13th. So Ficus is a Ficus I still don't know has always been around but um, they just like didn't talk about it until recently so yeah. if you're really really into your science and astrology it's not science but I guess it affects you some way I don't know it's yeah, I, I originally heard about this too because yeah. there was supposed to be a 13 gal calendar month uh -huh. and they would have been perfectly evenly dispute yeah. um, dispersed of uh -huh. days rather than having our uh, 30 31 days and then of course having a leap year to catch up yeah I mean I guess the number 13 was unlucky for them so I when they made so. the calendar they wanted just to do 12 and just like just I forget about everything else and just yeah. sweep it underneath the rug yep I think that's exactly it yeah and so but I guess the axis has tilted and so everything is kind of different up in the stars so that's the reason for this new emergence of this 13th constellation hmm. yeah but it's not going to really change anything like I don't really read my horoscopes ever no, no, or no. really I don't know it's very vague and if you read anyone else's horoscope you can see how it applies to you as well yeah. so that kind of dispels so horoscope. if you're freaking out about saying that your astrological your astrological sign has changed I don't think it has you're just fine yeah I mean yeah it's ridiculous like and these are dramatic changes too because I was on right on the line between Leo and Virgo mm -hmm. and now I'm like right in the middle of Leo yeah that's basically what this new sign said so if you guys want more information yeah. I'm assuming you can just go to the NASA's website about it you can yeah I found this on NASA's website and I also went to spirit science I think a uh, dot org or dot com and that's where I found other things and then another no newsworthy thing, um, this is article that I'm about to talk about I found on CNN, and CNN does a really good job about this. So in New Jersey and in New York over the weekend, there are two bombings, and they said that they were related, um, as well as a stabbing in Minnesota that also they think that these are all terrorist relations. So if you guys want to find out more, for about, more information about it, you can check out CNN.com. But what they said is that there's so someone set off a bomb on Chelsea in Chelsea in New York and then also in one in New Jersey and that they were related and but they found the guy they put out like an identification for the guy that did it and so they're on a manhunt for him and inv investigation is on occurring but I'm sure that everyone has heard about this already and that's read about it but I just wanted to let you guys know that CNN has a really good article about it so if you want to read more information on it that's it yeah but it's really scary one thing I love about Montana is that we're so safe up here like, we don't get, you don't have to worry, I don't know, you know, we don't really have bomb threats or crazy or things like anything that. anything high profile enough yeah. to have that kind of thing. Yeah. So, it's definitely kind of scary, um, but I guess, you know, just keep your loved ones close and your family close and try to be the best person you can and hopefully no one stabs you. <laughs> that's terrible. I yeah, know. that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple, couple newsworthy things, since we never really touch on world news, I just wanted to talk about. Yeah. Cool. So that's the end of that. Thank you. You're welcome, Scott. <laughs> so we have a segment coming up. Um, we're going to show you an art clip, and when we come back, um, we'll have Kempson Cross and uh, Cole Johnson on yeah. here to talk about uh, the Sentinel Sports stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 
for the Missoula Sentinel High School football Spartans. Uh, a very big win for the Spartans last week uh, on Friday night, Kempson against Helena High. Uh, they won 34 to 16. Um, they played great on defense and they got an enormous road win to even their record at two and two. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, both, both teams are two and two now. And uh, yeah, the Sentinel Spartans were able to get five interceptions off of Helena's quarterback. And um, they had a couple miscues on uh, special teams. They had a couple snaps that uh, were not able to get to the punter cleanly, and that led to some momentum for Helena, especially early on. But uh, Sagan was able to clean up some of those mistakes, especially in the second half. Um, even though Mitch Roberts had an interception in the game as well, he was the leading rusher for the whole game. And uh, so this dual threat capability was definitely on display. Um, and yeah, the ground game for Sentinel worked in general, uh, which is good because that's something that they need to, to have success down the stretch. Um, coming off of a loss to uh, a crosstown loss, it kind of emotionally draining for sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, but it was against a playoff team again in Big Sky, and Helen is a playoff team, and to go on the road and get a win over a playoff team is really impressive, especially in the fashion that they did it um, with that ball hawking secondary and uh, that strong. Yeah, I mean, it was an enormous win all the way around the five turnovers. Uh, they got a big stop on fourth down, then they went 96 yards um, to take the lead in that game. Um, looking at Sentinel now, they're 2-2, two and two, they're in that playoff hunt. Um, where is this team right now as you see them? Well, if the season ended today, they would be in the playoffs, uh, even though they're just 2-2. Two and two. And uh, eight teams get to the double A playoffs. Uh, if you include the Hellgate uh, forfeit win that they're going to get later on in their schedule, they're three and two. So halfway through their schedule, they have a winning record, which is definitely a step in the right direction. They're trying to beat five and five as a record because that's not good enough. That's what the last two years should should teach us mm -hmm. is that uh, five and five isn't good enough. They need at least six, at least six and four, and they're on pace for that. So that's a great step in the right direction. Uh, this defense, like we talked about, um, the turnover margin is definitely a positive for this team because of that defense. And also, uh, Mitch Roberts and, and company have cleaned up a little bit. They had a couple fumbles early on in the season. But, uh, yeah, Roberts was able to lead this team to a huge win on Friday night. And, um, yeah, at this point, I see them as a playoff team, especially after they have hung tough with Big Sky. They played decent against Senior. They uh, beat Butte convincingly, um, and then uh, they beat Helena on the road, which is huge. Yeah, the Spartans 2-2, two and two, um, like we mentioned, and I think focus and motivation is really the key with this team, really just being able to play um, a full four quarters um, every time they get out there. They have the talent to do it. I believe that they can make plays um, at opportune times, and if they're able to do that, um, they will be successful and they will make that playoff push like we mentioned. I'm um, looking forward this Friday night they play Billings Skyview. Skyview has one win on the year um, so looking to get another road win to bump their record above 500. They go to three and two if Sentinel were to take that. Um, what do you see in that game and how do you feel Sentinel will perform against Billings Skyview? I think it's a great way to start the the second half so to speak. Uh, I think Billings Skyview is a winnable game for Sentinel. Uh, it's going to be huge for them to uh, to just have good gap discipline because uh, Billing Skyview has a 
the triple option offense um, that you see Air Force or Navy run very well. Um, and so when that, if that gets rolling, if they get like five yards of play, then it can just kill you all night. Um, it can also lull you to sleep a little bit, so be careful um, of them trying to throw it over your head as well. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, with the way the defense has been playing, um, even though they're a little undersized, if they can just, again, stay in their gaps and the offense can just keep rolling, um, in a positive way, I think that Billing Skyview they should expect to win that game, even though it is on the road. Um, and it's a great it's a great thing because uh, to to have positive momentum snowball mm -hmm. going into a huge game on homecoming against Glacier, which we'll have for you on Spark Live on the 30th of September, uh, that's going to be huge to just keep building momentum going into that Glacier game. Missoula Sentinel looking to make their push for the playoffs against Billing Skyview this Friday night. I'm Cole Johnson. I'm Kevin Cross. And thank you for watching Wake Up Missoula on MCAT. Sergeant Greg Amison with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. Here's your best spray, babe. I don't need it. I can outrun them. Look, I ran track in high school. No, you can't. You're not supposed to run from bears. And you did the shot put. Okay, I'll spray down. What? No, don't spray! My face is burning! My face is burning now! <laughs> when hunting in bear country, understand, it puts you at risk. Be smart. Be safe. Be bear aware. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope! Hey, welcome back. And as you know, it is Monday, and as every Monday I've done uh, Tales from the Weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to bring it to kind of a nice close so I think I might end it in September by the end of next week or oh, something Tales like that. Oh, Tales from the Weekend? Yeah, just Tales from the Weekend because uh, flagship's going to be starting up yeah. and I really want to like emphasize more about after school programs yeah. and stuff like that. I agree. Um, but I think that would be a good time. I think Tales from the Weekend would be a good uh, to be a, put on a retainer but I will keep on doing um, Hallmark or Bullmark yes. uh, forever. And I have, <laughs> I've got a new segment coming up you guys. I found my diary from middle school. So we're going to start doing middle school diary Mondays. Hopefully starting next week. <laughs> so, here's the latest tale from the weekend. Are you guys ready to listen to a story that's about like two pages long? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, the, the story is called The Young Man in the Inner Tube. Ooh. And I took the inspiration from Hemingway's, um, Hemingway's novel, um, The Old Man in the Sea. <laughs> of course, it has nothing to do with it because I actually never read that. I just took the inspiration from the title. Anyways, <laughs> let's begin. Uh, the tale begins with a young Henry Jenkins. He's a young man who celebrated his first summer in his college town. He lives in a city near a river, kind of like Missoula. <laughs> Every summer, the river is littered with folks floating down the river, kind of like Missoula. <laughs> the summer, this summer, Henry is going down the river just east of town, kind of like the Blackfoot, like Missoula. Uh, anyways, uh, Hen uh, Henry is up is up at the launch area waiting for his friends to show up, but between you and me, I think they never show up. Um, so being abandoned by his friends, Henry waits until he decides to drive his car down to the pickup area and try to hitch a ride up at the launch point. There he meets Jessica and Emily. Jessica is a young girl who's from a small town and knows most of the rivers um, and floats uh, around the areas around the town. Um, she feels bad that Henry got abandoned by his friends. Emily, on the other hand, is the redhead who's not afraid to be to be quick and evasive with Henry, answering only yes or no to all forms of questions. Basically, a real piece of work. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> what are you saying about redhead, Scott? <laughs> um, she just happened to be a redhead. Uh, <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> 
<laughs> they agree to let Henry hitch a ride and Emily is not happy about that. Uh, they get to launch point and Emily takes Henry inside and says, <sighs> a lot of those audible sounds. Um, we're not going on the river. We're going on the river and would like it if you were not with us. Um, we kind of just, you know, thanks. So, oh God, <laughs> I know. Emily. Basically, not She's really communicating with that. words, but with attitude. Um, <laughs> Henry has uh, no intention of being any kind of third wheel. He just wanted um, to hitch a ride and you know, not to let this day to go to waste. You know, he took his car there. He's just like, okay. So Henry decided to jump in the river um, and begin his float down the river. Um, that's, uh, that's a terrible sentence. <laughs> At first, the river was kind of low, so he had to keep his butt up. Um, from out of the inner tube hole. So, you know, like where you have to sit up on the inner tube? Yeah, that's what he had to do for a little while. But of course, as the river became deeper, it also became faster. So he wasn't used to kind of like this sense of river because um, he was used to, you know, like the in the city river, not this river, who he didn't actually know. It was not really, not really connected to the, the river that goes across the town, kind of like Missoula. Um, as the river uh, began to slow down, he breathed a sigh of relief. It wasn't until he was met with a fork in the river that he began... Um, to become concerned. Uh, and of course, this would be like a tell us something story. Because yeah. like, um, tell us something is happening on um, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And it's a fork in the road. Anyways, um, the river <laughs> was moving him away from the town, so he flipped and began to swim and swim towards the opening towards his destination. Each paddle became weaker and weaker until there was a giant rock he could kick off of. He got closer and closer. He reached out with his foot and touched the rock. His foot his first foot slid off, but he was able to use his other foot just to get in the right position. Henry kicked off and was headed down the right path, but unbeknown to him, he, um, he just, uh, just because it's the right direction doesn't mean it's the right way geog geographically. So he's in the wrong, he's going the wrong fork in the road because the river goes naturally right yeah. where he needs to go, but he didn't just because the, like, the river just curves a lot. Yep. Uh oh. So he's now in a uncharted territory. <gasps> he went off the beaten path. Ooh. What's gonna happen? I'm now, so scared. Now enjoy the next half of the story right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as the river began to slow, he noticed a lack of shores that were on the main riverfront. Henry looked around, but uh, assumes that you know each river has split. We you know like they have certain areas where you know you can't just get off at anywhere. So he's like whatever. Uh, so Henry sat in his tube and drifted down the river until he began to doze off in the inner tube. Um, suddenly, the rapids and the river began to pick up violently, knocking Henry off his tube. Henry swam and swam towards the tube to get it back. He saw a large rock formation in the distance and began to rush towards his lonely tube. He grabbed his tube, but it was too late as his hand was holding onto the tube. The rock split the tube apart, um, deflating the tube and submerging Henry into the deepest part of the river. Um, Henry came too, but for Henry, um, he was up a creek without a paddle. <laughs> he looked around and saw nothing. He was barely dressed. Um, and the sun was in its final hour. What was Henry to do? Wait for someone to find him? Or find a way up the river from whence he came? Yes, I use the word whence. <laughs> <laughs> Henry began to walk along the rocky terrain with nothing on his feet but sandals, and one of them were broken. Was, was broken. Terrible sentence structure. Uh, Henry walked until the sun no longer lit the sky. If all could be said about Harry's predic Henry's predicament, the only positive thing was that the moon was full and lighted up the night sky. Other than that, he had seen that Henry was all alone in the middle of the wilderness. So the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter who you are. If you go anywhere alone, no one will know how to find you. But if you want a, like, if you want, uh, like a PS postscript like story, <laughs> Emily and uh, Jessica knew that you know he was there at, uh, the next day because Jessica knew he was floating the river and noticed him get, pick up his car. So he's just she's just kind of hanging out there. He's like, huh, his car's still there. So she called someone and someone rescued him later on. Ah, oh, and then they fell in love, right? Sure. <laughs> Yay! No, they, they actually <laughs> fell in love with Emily because you know she. She's like, <laughs> no, Emily's mean. No, she's mean, but she's a heart of gold. The nice one. She's a heart of gold. How come it couldn't be Jessica and Nadine? 
<laughs> that's right. <laughs> my my best friends' names are Jessica and Nadine, and Nadine is a fiery redhead. So that's why I was like, Scott, what do you got against redheads? <laughs> I did not actually mean to he, do that. I did not mean to write about those are my friends. her at all. I, I like Nadine. No, Nadine, I know, Nadine's, I know. Yeah, they're great. They're Nadine's my best great, friends. Yeah, they're yeah. awesome. It's just it's really It's like funny. they're going to watch the show. And no, they probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> they see me enough as is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably won't. Yeah. But that's real funny. I'm yeah. going to have to tell them. So um, this week. Weekend was pretty great. Um, we had our uh, second week of our stop animation. Yeah. It was really popular. Mm -hmm. We had like nine kids. Yeah, like, we haven't even done any advertising. And we no advertising a good group. whatsoever. I mean, we call the usual kids. You know, yeah. the, um, the usual yeah. suspects basically. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, and a lot of kids just showed up. And I, I didn't even remember telling Mason or Jack about our yeah. drop-in animation. They just knew that Saturday it started. Drop -in. They just kind of knew it was starting because uh -huh. I told them it's like, oh, it starts after Labor Day. You yeah. can come up whenever. Uh -huh. And they just showed up, and this yeah. was like, cool. So um, it, it was uh, a lot of we fun. Have, I would have shown you guys a video that we did. It was like yeah. where we wandered around the street and um, we, little, so Neil, little Mason. Neil oh. dressed up. We have a bunch of latex and a bunch of costume stuff left over from previous camps as well as our zombie camp. Yes. So Neil, one of our other co-workers, he dressed up Mason in like a scary clown and then we put on this clown costume and then he walked around and tried to get free hugs. Yeah, he had a he had a like old um, cardboard sign that said free hugs on it. And he just scared he got, he got He said he got eight hugs. Good. Which is really great. That's awesome. Uh, he's, he's a really funny kid. He calls his mom dude. <laughs> dude, I got so many hugs. I was like, can you call me mom? <laughs> but the Cat Moles are great kids. Yeah. Mason and Jack Cat Mull are awesome kids. And then their parents are super cool too. And then their dad um, is uh, Tom Cat Mull on Radio plays Stag. all over Missoula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has his own band. Yeah. Even the kids have their own band. Even the kids Everyone, have their own band. Everyone band. Everyone's in a band. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the, their mom has a band, probably. Probably. Yeah. This is the Wake Up Missoula band. <laughs> Wake Up Missoula band. Ace on yeah, piano. I'll play some drums. Scott will sing. We do like a, a Muppets recreation. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a nice weekend too. I just chilled and hung out with my friends, and then Saturday yeah. was really fun. Our drop in, mm -hmm. the kids were a blast. Had a good time. Saturday night, uh, I was so glad not to do anything that night. It, mm -hmm. I was so worth it. Um, mm -hmm. Friday night, I did uh, hung out with um, my buddy Greg from Greg and Sarah. Yep, Greg and Sarah. And I hear about Greg and Sarah, but they always sound like a sitcom to me. It is. <laughs> a sitcom. <laughs> so if I ever meet them in real life, I'm gonna be like, but I'm well, done. it's like cheers. Greg it's like Sarah. cheer. It, like yeah. uh, us three are like kind of like cheer because we always go to the same bar and we just hang out and talk about it. It's like, I'm the one that doesn't drink. Yeah, and it's got doesn't And they're drink. the couple, yeah. and then there's the bartender who, who's his own character as well. <laughs> <laughs> what bar do you guys go to? Uh, we always go to the depot. The depot, yeah. nice. Yeah. I like the depot. We, we don't order any food because it's expensive. It is, yeah, but... Yeah, do you order sodas? Do you order water? Yeah, I order uh, DC. Nice, G yeah. GNCs? <laughs> DC. DC? Diet Cola. Ah, Diet Cola. I'm trying to bring it back, so I'm gonna go to Washington DC and order some DC, then come back right after. <laughs> I'm not even gonna stay in DC. I know you're gonna go to Smithsonian. Look, I brought back There's DC. a lot of museums here. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> you're like, history. No. It's part of history. It's like, no. I'm in DC for DC only. Yeah. Diet Cola. <laughs> I'm getting down with the DC. <laughs> whoop, whoop. All right. So it's Monday. Um, we had a full show for you guys. Um, yep. well, we we hope to we continue on a, um, that a new sports segment. And of course, we're at, we're at the 50 mark. So yeah. I just want to give another plug to our website, uh, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to meet you. Write it out twice. Our Facebook page, you should totally like us there. We post everything there. Um, you could follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter page at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information, go to MCAT.org. But of course, if you want to be on our show to talk about an upcoming about, uh, rally, event, or cause, you can call us at 542 6228 or you can email us MCAT at MCAT.org. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noelle McAvoy. Here's ASAP Adonai.